It's Department of Motor Vehicles. It is like a long line. So when you go and, so, and you get this notice that you've got to go to the Department of Motor Vehicles, what do you think? What? License renewal, driver's license, license plates. What's that? Anything else? The cost keeps going up every year, it seems like, right? What, what's that? <laughs> okay, L let's grab the next one. This is a doctor's office. Uh, uh, sorry, Monica, but. I was thinking I'm at work. Huh? I said, I'm just thinking I'm at work. Huh? Huh? Long wait. I got a bad news and what else? Last what? Lab work. Blood work. Lab work. What was yours, John? Bad, um, bad news. Bad news? What's wrong? Missing other appointments. Missing other appointments? Okay. Can I tell you what I'm thinking of? I'm trying to figure out how I can build in for my time waiting. I haven't been able to yet. They keep, they, they, I can't take them to collections either because they don't pay my bill that I give them. Okay. Uh, so here's the, here, here's the next one. This is Walmart.
it's can I share with you something? It's not just this one. Someone posted on Facebook, if I want if if I want what was it? Oh yeah, if I want self-checkout, I would just go to Amazon. Right? <laughs> and, and I mean, honestly, if you go to Kroger's, you, you go to Walmart now, you've got two to three lines open, and you've got 38 self-checkouts. Well, if I wanted to do a self-checkout, I would just do a scan and go. And... So it's hire more cashiers, but I understand they're saving money, but they're also wasting my time. Yeah. Anything else? Wait time. Okay, with, with every one of these, we could probably find something wrong, right? And so, what happens a lot of times is, is this. When we look at each one of these, whether it be the doctor's office, the DMV, or the, the grocery line, and if we have a bad experience, what do we do? We, we, we don't really give them a good review, do we? we? We just kind of put out there that, you know, things are wrong and they're, they're just not there. Now, when I asked you about the DMV and I asked you about the uh, grocery store and I asked you about the doctor's office, I never heard anyone say that they loved it. <laughs> right? Uh, and, 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 and we don't. Be, because there, there's things wrong with them. And, and we try, you know, we try to, to fix them. I don't know about you, but if anybody ever told me that they love going to the DMV, I would probably tell them you need to go to the doctor's office <laughs> and, and be checked in, right? Well, here's the question that I have. I'm not a drawer at all, but Sometimes you wonder, what if we put up on the screen a picture of the church? What would the reviews and stuff be? Sometimes we think that going to church is like the DMV or the doctor's office or the grocery store. It's something that I really don't want to do, but I really, I just got to. And so what ends up happening is, you think about it for a minute and look around. Think of all of the people that you know that are here. And think about all of those people that haven't stepped in side of a church in how long. And you ask yourself sometimes, well, why not? Why aren't they here? Why are they missing? I, I, I can look out on Facebook and I can see people that will constantly say, pray for us and do this and do that. And, and they want all of these things, but they never ever show up. And you'll hear people say, well, I love this and I love that, but they, they never do anything about it. And so, if sometimes you would go back and ask them, some of these people, they would think that going to church is kind of like the DMV. It, it, I've got other things to do rather than this. It, it kind of um, messes with my plans. And, and so they, they kind of stay away. And so what we need to understand is just exactly why did God create 
the church. And what was the reason? Um, yesterday, Mark brought something to me. This was written yesterday and was published in the newspaper. And here's the headlines. When is it okay to quit church? And it said, here are five reasons to leave. To leave. And I don't agree with all of them, but let me just read some of this to you. And we'll continue then with the message. It says, Americans change churches like homeowners change air filters. Throw a little dirt on, on, uh, or time in a certain direction and it's time for a change. According to the Pew Research, there are four primary reasons why people change churches. Number one, sermon quality, welcoming environment or the people, the style of worship or location. The translation is clear. Americans treat church like a product to consume instead of as a family to belong. When we treat church like a product, we consume until our needs are no longer met. When we treat church like a family, we fundamentally understand there are no perfect churches. Like family, every church comes with broken people. That includes church leadership. Most of the time when someone leaves a church is because a minor issue has grown into a monumental issue to the person or people involved. The gentleman writes, in all my years of pastoring, I've never heard of someone who left the church because the pastor suddenly changed his theology or adopted snake handling worship practices. If a pastor suddenly changes his theology and tells the church to sell everything and move to the mountains for Jesus' return on July the 16th in 2018, you should leave. Too often people have a church, or, or too often people leave a church because of disagreement, not getting their way, or because the sermons are no longer deep enough. Often when we dig into the reason the sermons are not deep enough, it ultimately goes back to the person being offended or not having their faulty theologies endorsed from the pulpit. The same pastor who was previously deep enough became shallow once there is an offense. It's incredibly difficult to hear from God in a sermon when we are offended by the person delivering the sermon. Before we quit church, we need to make sure we take the separation seriously. Church is not a product to consume. It's a family to which we belong. Big difference. When we leave, we make a statement. When we leave because we don't get our way, it will set a poor example for others. You need proof? Just ask the Pharisees. They had an audience with the Son of God but could not get past their offenses. Perception can impact the ability to trust. If we do not trust that person, we will reject the message, even if the message is true. As Christians, we should examine our motives before we make a decision. Before we quit church, we need to check our motives. Are we running away from a problem? Is there an issue between us and someone else? If so, have we followed Matthew 18 and talked to the person instead of about the person? Frustration is never con content or, or is never content until it's expressed. If we have frustrations that we have not dealt with, those same frustrations will most likely follow us to the next church. Before we leave, have we done everything we can to make peace in the situation? He says, as a pastor, I know how difficult it is to express frustrations with church leadership. It may be difficult, but Christians are called to a higher standard without attacking. Have we expressed our concerns with the church leadership? Are we willing to get our hands dirty and become part of the solution? Have we prayed about leaving? He says, these are tough questions that force us to get real. Before we quit church, we need to make sure that we take the separation seriously. Church is not a product to consume. It is a family to which we belong. 
big difference. When we leave, we make a statement. When we leave because we don't get our way, it will set a poor example for others. He says, and he, he's got five reasons. One of them I don't agree with, okay? And I'll share with you which one it is in just a minute. He says, it's okay to leave if God calls you to leave. Too many people leave church and God has never ever called them to leave that church. They go because they just want to leave, okay? He says, it's okay to leave for family and marriage, okay? Um, yes and no, depends, okay? Here's the one I don't agree with. It's okay to leave a church if you have moved far, too far away to conveniently drive to your church. I disagree with that one because God may cause me to move, but not cause me to move my church. Too many times what we want to do is we want to say, well, I want to stay, I want to, where, I want to go to church close to where I live. If there's a church around the corner, I'm going to go to that church. Well, here's the problem. I'm going to go to that church because it's right on the corner, but I don't agree with their theology. But it's close. I'm just going to go to it because it's close. I'm not going to go to it because I agree with it. I go to it because I, because I could get sleep in 35 minutes longer in the morning instead of taking a 35 minute drive to church. Let me say this to you. A lot of times we will drive 35 to 40 minutes to work, but we won't drive 35 and 40 minutes to church. That's where I disagree, okay? This one I do agree with. And, and, and uh, it's okay to leave if you cannot follow the church's leadership, okay? Sometimes there are disagreements and, and you just can't do it and so you leave. And then the last one is it's okay to leave if heresy is being preached. If somebody like Jim Jones goes off the rockers and they're asking you to drink the Kool-Aid, get out of there, okay? Don't stay, just go. Right, so it's been a while since I've communicated to you all about our vision in, in this church. And so I wanna do that and, and then we'll, we'll, we're encompassing all of this together. One of the things that we believe in the vision for this church has always been that we don't become so infatuated with the building that we lose sight of the people outside the building. If we're so concerned about just me being comfortable here and not reaching the people out there, then, then we're, in the wrong, we're in the wrong place. And you're in the wrong church because this church is not that way. And it won't be. A lot of pastors, when VBS comes along, will take vacation. I don't. And the reason I don't is because 16 souls got saved. Amen. Because if I believe that I want you involved with those kids' life, I need to be involved with those kids' life. Guys and gals, I, can't, I am so uncoordinated in dancing. Okay? And if, and if Jim puts in on the video me dancing, we're gonna have a discussion. <laughs> I know, but it's not America's Funniest Videos, okay? And, and it's really hard to dance when, especially when you're watching somebody and, and they're going to the right, and in actuality you're looking at them and they're going to the left. And so you're sitting here trying to do, trying to get this arm like this and this arm going this way, and I find myself doing this, <laughs> you, you know? And I come over here and I'm doing, this, I'm doing the same thing, you know? And, and it looks stupid, <laughs> you, you know? It looks stupid to me. The kids have no clue because they're just, they're just trying their best. Every Sunday, 
because if they come back tonight, they can see you do it. Yes, if you, come, if you could come back tonight, I guarantee you, you will die laughing. Okay? And, and it's okay. I'll get down with the kids, and I'll let the kids make fun of me, and I'll play with the kids, because kids are what we love. And that's why I say to y'all, this church, I love those. But my love doesn't stop there. My love goes to everyone that's, that's hurting. We ran into kids this week who both their parents are dead because they both OD'd. We've run into kids who came here to eat because they hadn't had anything to eat all day and it's six o'clock at night we ran into kids that'll break your heart with the stories that they have to tell you we, we have we run into kids and, and and you ask where's your mom and dad and they say i don't know i'm here i'm there or my dad's in jail my mom's in jail that this happened and that happened. And, and, and so you look at that. And so it's not just the kids, guys and gals, it, it, it's a whole family that's hurting. There was a gentleman in the newspaper this week in Middletown who used to do drugs, got off of drugs. Heart for those that were suffering but what he did was, he took on every one of those people by himself. They would call him at night, he would go get them out of jail or go here or go there for them and take them here and take them there. Not sleeping, not doing this, not doing that. And then all of a sudden he got to a point where he needed something. Guess what he went to? Right back, and you know what he said? He said, I'm so sorry. I've left so many people down. He says, but I've got to fix me before I can fix anybody else. And you need to pray for him. He's in rehab now for up to six months. He's got a wife and a daughter that right now are praying for their dad to get well, to come back home. You see, we are not to the point where we can't fail. We may falter and we may fail, but that doesn't give us the right to kick them while they're down. What it gives us a right to do is extend a hand to them to help pick them up. And that's what this church is about. Now, is everybody gonna agree? No, but we're gonna be here, we're gonna do what it is that God wants us to do. So if you got your Bibles, go to John chapter 13 and verse number 34 and 35. If you don't have it, we got it up on the screen. It says this, I give you a, a new commandment. Love one another. Just as I have loved you, you must also love one another. Why? So that by this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Now, let me say this, this verse was prior to the church coming into existence. This was a prelude of what the church was supposed to do, okay? Because the church wasn't gonna start till later in the book of Acts. But here we find Jesus meeting with his disciples and telling him how his followers should be known. And what the reputation will be of this community 
which is the church that he is creating. They will be people known for what? Their love for one another. Let me say this to y'all. Church people are meant to love one another. Now let me state this for you. This is not optional. You can't say, I like that, I love this person over here, but I don't love that person. I may not like what you do, but I'm still gonna love you. And I'm gonna tell you what you're doing because I do love you. Because I'm supposed to. If you're doing something, I am to go to you in love and tell you what you're doing. Not go tell everybody else what you're doing. That's not love, ladies and gentlemen. This is why we have dysfunctional families. How many of you all come from a family where every, this whole side of the family doesn't like you, but none of them will tell you, none of them will not tell you why they don't like you? Hmm? But yet they will talk to you to your face like you are as sweet as honey. But when you ain't in the crowd, you are the snake in the pit. That's not church. He says, we're known by this. It's like yesterday. We went out to eat with Rick and Tammy. One of the favorite places that we like to eat. So we go out to eat. The, the service was so-so. But Diana had asked for her, for her eggs to be cooked over easy. Okay, that means with the white, it's done, but the yellow is runny. Now, if you're back in the back and you're cooking and somebody comes back and asks for over easy eggs, you should know how to cook those over easy eggs, right? And if you are having breakfast and you are ordering grits and they come out with your food and say, sorry, but the grits are gonna be five minutes. No. Why are you serving me this part and bringing me my grits in five minutes when I'm halfway through, through this? And then the, the third thing was, you give me a bowl of something and it's half filled. But you're going to charge me full price. So the unfortunate part about it is the server is the one that has to bring the stuff from the cook to your table. And unfortunately, a lot of times the server is the one who gets the brunt of all of this. And I have come to the point that I'm, I'm not doing that. If I don't like the way my food is cooked, I'm asking them to bring the manager and the cook. Because I want to talk to the cook who did my, my cooking. Because the server has nothing to do with the cooking. But it might be a little bit of time before I ever go back to eat there again. And, and so that's the way we treat a restaurant. We're a consumer. If I go to a restaurant and I get the worst food in the world, what am I going to do? I'm going to give it some bad reviews and I ain't going back there. Because that's what we do as a consumer, as a product. But church, guys and gals, is not to be treated as a consumer. It is treated as a family. If there's things that you don't like about your family, you just don't say, hey, I'm going to change my name and I'm no longer part of that family.
that got rid of a lot of things. It went cool, because I know exactly why it's doing that. Okay, and so that's the way it is with, with the restaurant. Now, there are times and maybe you can relate to this story. The illustration says, my son turned five recently, and for his birthday, he got a toy workbench. It has little plastic tools and projects that can be made with everything. Of all the presents he got from the family, that was the one that he wanted to play with. And he said, Dad, will you put it together and play with me? Well, who could resist? So we did just that, and we had a great time laughing and playing. Tucking him into bed that night, I asked him if he had a good birthday. And he said, I did. It was super fun, especially the workbench. And he said, I love you, Dad. And the father said, I love you too, buddy. The thing of it is, we love our sons. We love our daughters. And they don't always do the things that we want them to do. And so the question is this, what do you mean when you say, I love my church? Because what does it mean to love one another? Does he want us to love one another like we love the experience at the restaurant? Or does he want us to love one another or to love the church as I do my children or my son? I think you know the answer. And the answer is this. I went to the restaurant, why? Because it was offering me something. The restaurant fed me, and it, and it gave me a moment into which I could participate. If that moment is good, then I give it an excellent rating, I go to Yelp, and I say, okay, uh, that's fine, and, and, if I, and if I didn't, I wouldn't return there, okay? But here's what has happened. With my son, we are intricately in a relationship. You can't sever that relationship. He is your son. And so what happens is, my love for my son isn't based on what I'm receiving from him or experiencing. But rather, my, my love for my son is based on who he is. Too many times, ladies and gentlemen, we go to the church based on what we want it to be. And sometimes, a lot of times, it is not going to be perfect. And too many times, people have got the wrong impression. Church is not a place to take things out of. Church is a place that you go to put things into. Amen. I go to a restaurant and I expect to get what I paid for. But the problem is, when I come to church, I expect to get more out of it than I put into it. I want to be blessed, but I don't want to be the blesser. It is better, he says, to give than it is to receive. 
May I give you another analogy to that? Ladies and gentlemen, it is better to bless than to be blessed. If all I'm waiting for is blessings, then I'm not doing anything. I'm sitting here expecting everything to come to me. But let me say this to you. When you bless someone, you get a blessing in return. I'm not expecting it, but I get it. When we came this week, it was like, okay, what, we, we sat down and we, we'd done vac vacation Bible school for like the weekends. And, and we said, this ain't working. We, we've got to do a little bit more. And, and so we, we did, we did uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Okay, so we, we did two hours a night. And, and so when, when, you, when you're in here on um, Friday night, and all of a sudden they come running in and they say, listen, we've got five We've got five or six kids that made decisions. You're thinking, this is cool. This is what th this is all about. Okay? It wasn't what we were putting in because we were tired. I went home, my back was hurting Thursday night. My back is still hurting today. And, and I'm still gonna come tonight and I'm still gonna hurt my back. <laughs> because it ain't gonna go away until I go to a chiropractor and he does something, I don't know. Or I learn, don't dance anymore. <laughs> but then we come in here Saturday. It is hot. It is midday. It is miserable. It is hot. And we come to the end. Well, let me, let me give you the rest of the story. Let me preface this. Diana came to me. She was the last one to teach on... Um, Friday night, and, and the six that had gotten saved. And, and so there was one little boy that she said, is, Huh? Wasn't me on On Friday night. Yeah, but yours got saved on Saturday. But Friday, you only had one minute. Yeah. Yeah. It was my story. Let me finish it. <laughs> hold, hold on for a minute, okay? Y'all be quiet. Was I telling the story right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> what a blessing I got today. But, but she but she was tell she, she loves me we're family <laughs> but anyway she she comes and we're, we're talking and she says I didn't have my watch on and I'm, I'm in the lesson and I'm getting right to a good part to talk to him and Peggy comes in all excited you know with all of this and she says by the way you only got one more minute left and she says, and I, I had to go to closing program. And she said, there was one, one little boy I know. He was right, right at the edge. Right there. And she said, we came into the, to that. And here's what I told her. I said, never do that. It is more important to finish with that one child that is ready to get received than to make it to a closing program. Isn't that what I said to you? And so we... Yeah, so we were, we, we were talking, and, and, and she says, well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back tomorrow when I get in there, and I'm going to kind of start where I left off, and, and I'm going to finish. And I said, that's what I would do. Now, let me share with you. There were 12 kids in that class yesterday. She didn't do this, okay, I want you all to bow your heads and raise your hands and all this stuff. Each one of them prayed themselves. Ten kids out of that class, out of those 12 kids, got saved. Oh, 
And you want to know why the other two didn't? They were already saved. And they understood it. They were our two grandsons, um, RJ and uh, um, Eli. But all of the other ones. And uh, the one, and, and in a minute, we're going to have all of the kids come in and, and going to give them an opportunity to come forward. That they got saved in VBS if, if they want to. But one of them is Jackson. We call him Jack Jack, which is Jerry, uh, Jerry, um, Susan and Gary's other grandson uh, from uh, Andrea. He got saved. Now, so now it, it's, it's moving. In, in, in ways. And, and why? Why do we do it? Because we love our church. We love our church. It's, it's a relationship. And, and we need to understand that the church was never meant to be a restaurant, ladies and gentlemen. To have a menu for what you want and pick and choose from. And, and so this is what my church is. Okay, I go to McDonald's because there are certain things that I like there. I, I go to Hardee's because there are certain things that I like there. I, I go to Cracker Barrel because there are certain things that I like there. I go to Steak and Shake because there are certain things that I like there. Not waiting. But I know I'm going to wait a Steak and Shake for my food. And that's okay. I know that ahead of time. But I like my food. And, and so we'll go there. So, so what does it look like to intentionally love my church. Number one, and I've been trying to talk to you about this, it is love by connecting. I can tell my wife all day long, and I've shared with you this, when I first started pastoring, I would tell my wife and I would tell my kids that I love them, but where did I spend all of my time? Not in church, but in the building. I would see them for about five or 10 minutes, and, and then maybe I might get there in time to get the kids to bed, or maybe I might see them in the morning. Because why? I thought I was loving my church. No, I was loving a building. Now, did we have a lot of felt? Did we have a lot of connecting? Yes, we did. Some of those moments I would never take back. Because in some of those moments of those, that dirty building and getting it ready, we built some great friendships that have lasted over 30 years. And I wouldn't take that back, but I would sure do it differently. Because I still could have built the friendships without all of the time. That's what church is. Church isn't just coming here and sitting with each other on Sunday morning. If I only went to my wife on Sunday and say, I love you, what would she think about me the rest of the week? Hey Chuck, someone just came in the house. Looks like you, but I don't know who it is. We do good at fellowshipping, and, and, and let me say this. As Baptists, we have got the wrong conception. Every time we sit down and meet with each other, we do not have to eat. <laughs> it, it's, we, we've got it wrong. There are times to sit down with each other and get to know each other. Someone's hurting. And I'm not saying you're going to do this with everybody. And I'll guarantee you, I won't do it with everybody. I've learned my lesson. I don't tell everybody what's going on in my life. Not unless I want it on Facebook or in the journal. Okay? Or ground chuck for Sunday's dinner. We love by connecting. And we love by serving. Okay? Let me say this to you. God has given each and every one of you a supernatural thing to do to help in the community. He didn't just save you 
to sit. He saved you to move. It may be, like, uh, I'll just use Sue for an example. We started the journey of hope. So what does she do? She knows how to sew. We were talking about giving quilts. So what does she do? She sewed a quilt that we gave to Thene, right? That, that she took. There are others that know how to bake. And, and so when someone is sick or someone is hurting, someone makes meals and takes to that person, okay? It, it's someone is, is, is just down. And, 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 and then just go over to them and just give them a hug. Don't put Rick and I together with anybody, okay? But a little girl, really difficult, really struggling, okay? And, and, and so I just looked at her and I said, do you mind if I just give you a hug? And she says, no. And I gave her a hug and she hugged back. Okay? Then Rick looks at her like only Rick could do. And he says, make me a pinky promise that you'll be back tomorrow. The girl came back yesterday. You know what? I can't do this because I'll make fun of myself. When we were doing the dancing, that girl had the biggest smile on her face. She was into the dancing and moving like in, nobody I had ever seen. Totally different than the day before. Why? Because we're serving. We're not looking to see, well, that's a child. That child's hurting. That child just needed a hug. That child just needed someone to talk to for a moment, to brighten up her day. It didn't take anything out of us to serve her. But praise God, it put a lot in us when we saw her back on Saturday. Amen. Smiling and laughing and having a good time. Different than the way she came the day before. Love by giving. And I know when we talk about this, we'll come to it in loving my church by giving. And everybody's gonna say, hey, here we go, we're talking about money. Ain't there, not gonna happen, okay? We'll talk about some other things because I'm not guilt tripping people and everything else. And, and then the, the other aspect is to love by sharing. Okay. So uh, if you want to get the kids, I'll finish. Okay. And, and so here's, here's the problem. Let me ask you this question. We did this with the kids. All their, the little kids. Remember that song that says, Jesus loves me? How much do you believe that Jesus loves you? How much love do you think Jesus has for you? Huh? Unending, unexplainable. Yeah. But what did he give you that love for? To share it. It's to give it away. Amen. To give it away. But what we want to do is we want to tell people how much, we don't want to tell people how much God loves us. We want to know that God loves us and we want to hoard it. You ever been into a home of a hoarder? Huh? They just contained everything. They just can't stop themselves. They can't stop themselves. They can't stop themselves. They, they just keep accumulating, accumulating, and accumulating. And, and guess what? It accumulates so much that it, it, it really is bad for their health. It really is. Because they can't get around. They become a prisoner in their own house. Let me say this to you. If all you do is just take God's love and hoard it, you are a prisoner in your own body. Amen. And you are the most miserable Christian you will ever meet. God didn't give you love to contain it. He gave you love to give it away. 
And when you give it away, you get it in return. And once you learn that, that saying and that meaning, ladies and gentlemen, it will change your life. I don't love you. And I get up every morning that I remember, I try, and sometimes I don't, I don't do too well. I get up every morning and make my wife's coffee. I hate coffee. <laughs> but I don't do it because I want to do it. I do it because I know she is tired when she gets up in the morning. And in order to help her function, I will make sure that she has her coffee. Okay, if I don't have the coffee ready, every once in a while she'll yell, you know. <laughs> I said every once in a while. I, don't, I didn't say that she does it all the time. She'll walk, in, she'll walk in there and she'll say, is my coffee ready? And I'll say, I just poured it in. Oh man, you mean I could have slept 10 more minutes? You, you know? And, and you think I'm making her out to be a, a, a villain. And that's not what I'm doing, guys. I, I'm saying, I do this not because I want to make sure that she doesn't yell at me. That's not the reason that I do it. Even if she does yell at me every once in a while, it, it, it's okay. I'm still going to make her coffee the next day. And I do it because I love her. It isn't because I love it for me. Because if it was me, I'd be pouring my coat through there and trying to chill it. But we need, to, we need to understand that if you really understand what loving your church is all about, then you're, you're, you're going to give. Amen. And you're going to get connected with, with one another. Okay? And, and that's why I keep trying to talk to you about just getting connected, guys and gals. And, and so we're going to get our invitation. And so, um, these are their time, your time. Because this isn't an invitation just for VBS. This is an invitation for you or anyone else. That maybe God's saying, you know what? He would like for you to be a part of this church. He would like you to be a part of this community. He would like you to be a part of this family. And you need to understand that you need to say, hey, okay, God, I got you. I want to be a part of this family. I want to experience what this family experiences. I don't want to be a spectator. I want to be a part. And I want to know what it is. But this morning, if you've gotten saved, would you like to come and be baptized? Or if you would like to join this church, by letter, by statement. Let's stand together and let's come, okay? Hello, this is Pastor Chuck Cotton from Calvary Baptist Church. First of all, I'd like to say thank you very much for taking the time out to either listen to our sermon or to watch it on video. We are grateful that you've actually taken the time and hope and pray that it has been a blessing to you as it was to us as we delivered it to our congregation. We ask if you have any questions whatsoever that you email us at Pastor Chuck at CalvaryBaptistMiddletown.org or you could come in and give us a phone call if you would please at area code 513-423-7251. I'd like to take this opportunity to also invite you to come to our church and visit us if you would please. We actually have small groups on Sunday morning starting at 930 with our morning worship following at 1045. Prior to our morning um, small groups we also provide donuts with coffee um, milk, orange juice, a time for fellowship, get to know each other, have a good time before we actually break out into our small groups for Sunday. Our worship services are uplifting, they're fast moving, and everything in our service is just a fast pace. But we do take time every once in a while to slow down as we feel the Holy Spirit moving, and we never want to hinder it in any way. We also have on Sunday evening, during the school year, we have Awana, and Awana starts with a Puggles, actually from age two all the way up through high school. And during that period of time, we also have a worship service. Both of these start at six o'clock 
and end at 7.30. Our Wednesday night, we have a Bible study, which starts at 7, we generally finish about 8.15. We would love for you to come and visit with us. Don't have to dress up, just come as you are, because to us, it doesn't matter. You're, you're a child of God, a creation of His, and so to us, you're important to everything that we do. Our motto here is building the kingdom one life at a time. And we hope that we have a chance to visit with you, get to know you as you get to know us. So thank you and may God bless you.